Hey there, today is Monday, October 5th. Today's video is a follow-up on questions regarding seaming. The artwork I'm using today was made with tape and ribbon. I've spent a little time playing with levels of the background, which will allow me to pull apart the colors a little bit easier. I want to go through the method of using a cluster of motifs that I'll then offset and then remove out any additional space that will resolve the seaming of it. To resolve the seaming, I'm going to go to Filter, Other, Offset. I'm going to work on offsetting this artwork vertically. What I'm going to do here is move some of these motifs down so it begins to integrate with some of the existing motifs below. I'm going to make sure the background color in my toolbar is accurate to the background in my artwork. I'm then going to select the area where the motifs exist and then using the magic wand delete out any of the white background. I'm holding Alt while using the magic wand. This is pretty good. I'm going to copy Command C and cut Command X, and then I'm going to go to Edit, Paste Special, Paste in Place. It's going to paste that layer directly on top of where I copied it from. As I move it down, I'm going to hold Shift, and this is going to lock it in place from moving anywhere in the canvas. I'm going to find a location where the two edges meet and feel interconnected along the seam. I'm going to move a guide down so it snaps right to the edge of the motif on that layer. If your guides don't snap to the layer, go to View and make sure Snap is checked, and also make sure Snap to Guides, Layers, or Document Bounds are all selected. Because I'm working with a layer on top of another layer, I could erase through aspects of the artwork to make it feel like it's going underneath other areas within the artwork. For example, on this bottom left area, if I change the opacity momentarily, I can erase through using E on the keyboard, bits of the ribbon so it appears like it's interlacing underneath of the other ribbons. I'm going to select between the guides and the rest of the artwork. I'm going to go to Image and Crop to crop down my selection. This is where I can flatten the artwork and just commit to where things are, knowing that we can go back in and remove stuff if needed. I'm going to flatten this layer. Layer, flatten layer. This time around, I'm going to offset horizontally. I'm going to do the same thing I did before, but this time I'm going to make my selection vertically. I'm going to use the magic wand to delete areas in the background. I'm going to hit copy. Command C. I'm going to cut it. Command X. And then I'm going to go to Edit, Paste Special, Paste in Place. Using the Move tool, I'm going to move the motifs over. Don't forget to hold Shift. I'm going to drag some guides down right to the edge 
of the motif on that layer. I'm going to make a selection between the guides and the rest of the artwork. I'm going to go to Image and Crop to crop down my selection. I'm going to commit to this, layer, flatten image. I'm going to define this just to check it out, edit, define pattern, and then I'll make a new file. It's a little larger than the original. And then I'm going to fill that by going to edit, fill, pattern most recent pattern and then fill it up. There were some additional questions regarding when to index the artwork and when not to. If I was scanning something in with high contrast that I can remove from the background easily, I might actually index that early on. Sometimes I don't index stuff until halfway through the process, so maybe by then I've already put some things into repeat. I get to a point where I feel confident that the composition looks tight, that the spatial balance is resolved, there's nothing distracting, it's aesthetically sound, and then I might index it for the purposes of maybe removing or adding in new bits and pieces, textures, additional motifs, or I might wait to the very end where everything's in repeat like it is now and then I'll index it down to something manageable.